Well, the people in this picture of the Misfits, this group, are the producer, the main stars, the writer, and the uh, director. Uh, the producer was not a, was an amateur producer, actually, he was a book publisher. Frank Taylor was his name, and he uh, produced this picture a kind of as a, as a first. He never produced another one, which is easy to understand when you can, when you think about all the problems that he had on this one. But anyway, he was the least important of the people in this picture and the, the least visible, so very often when this picture is reproduced, he is removed by retouching. The funny thing is, though, on the picture that they use, his little toe shows on the bottom of the photograph, uh, right behind the Montgomery Cliff. And it's, it's, it's very small. So when they take him out, they always, or they usually forget to take out his foot. So there's just a little bit of his foot left in the photograph. I spent two weeks on the film. Um, all of my colleagues, or many of my colleagues at Magnum, worked on this film because we used to work on all of John Huston's films, uh, Magnum did, because John Huston was a great friend of Robert Kappa's, and uh, although Robert Kappa had been killed uh, some years before, 1954, we kept on the relationship with uh, John Huston, and we generally worked on all his movies. The atmosphere on the picture was very, very tense, to say the least mostly due to the uh, sad state of Marilyn. She was not in very good psychological condition. In fact, it was her last picture. And uh, although she was absolutely charming person and a wonderful person when she was there, she wasn't there much of the time. She was, would lock herself up in her <clears throat> van and wouldn't come out and disappear quite frequently going back to Hollywood to see her psychiatrist. And so everyone sort of had to stay around and, and wait for her to return as she was the star of the picture. The temperature was extremely hot. It was around 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the day in the desert. That's what it is. And in fact, that's one of the interesting things. Because of the problems with Marilyn and because of her fragile condition, this is not her real hair. Uh, we had, uh, they had four or five different wigs and uh, waiting to be slapped on her head just after her makeup was finished, simply to cut down the time that was required to prepare her for the, uh, for the scenes. As you can see from the contacts, they're all playing around, they're all having a wonderful time, in spite of the fact that I think half of the time they're ready to strangle one another because of all the tensions and because of all the delays and because of all the, and all of this in 110 degree heat. Uh, John Houston was uh, extraordinary at that time. He, uh, he would work all day on the movie and then watch the uh, rushes and then gamble in Reno for most of the night, sometimes for all of the night. And then he would show up again on the set in the morning and continue working. And the thing would be repeated day after day. Clark Cable was uh, very professional, but not a very warm person towards everyone else. He, he strictly did his job and went home to his family. And he was available when he was supposed to be available, and not one minute more, and not one minute less. He was not interested in, uh, in socializing, uh, which is understandable. He, was, he just did his job and went home. Montgomery Clift was another person, a very troubled person. He, was, he had been in an accident a couple of years before that disfigured him, his face and it was reconstructed by a plastic surgeon. And as with any big star, everybody was always looking at him to see uh, how, <laughs> how it was repaired. So, and also, he was a very nervous person. He's a sort of actor that would always ask interminably about what is my motivation? What is my motivation for 
crossing the street. What is my motivation for putting on my hat? He was a person who needed an enormous amount of reassurance, who was always sort of begging for attention and for love. Arthur Miller wrote the story, and he wrote the script, and he was the husband of the star, and he was the collaborator on the film of John Huston. Uh, I think generally on very good movies, the uh, writer is, is uh, on the set, and especially in this one, I don't know personally, but I'm sure there were many things to be rewritten, to be redone, things that didn't work as well, and uh, it, was, uh, it was very important for him to be there. Actors are impossible whenever there's a camera around and they, they play for it and they, they do all kinds of things. It's really quite amusing. I would think, and I actually hadn't thought of it before, that the pictures of them fooling around with one another are a lot more interesting than the end product. Because the end product you sort of expect. I mean, you expect to see them, but here you don't expect them to be pinching each other's behinds and whatever they're doing. Actors always do that. Sure. Marilyn Monroe had the most extraordinary ability of always looking good for the camera, no matter how awful she looked in person. At this particular time in her life, she was quite a bit overweight. Now, everybody knows that people have to be thin to look right in photographs. She was overweight, and she still looked all right for the camera. But directly, she didn't look so good. There's something, there's, well, I guess that's what you call star quality. It's, it just comes up. But she does know how to play with the camera. She loves to have a picture taken. She, she loved to have her picture taken. And it's really very difficult to take a bad picture of her under any circumstances. She, she just knew what to do all the time. It seemed to me logical to take a picture of everyone together, and it probably wasn't easy, as I remember, because <clears throat> any time that you take away from a production that is vastly behind schedule and vastly over budget is uh, doesn't sit well <laughs> with the producer. So you really have to fight to get these people together because I, I would imagine that we've lost, that they lost a half an hour for the photograph, maybe an hour to get ready. And when you consider what it costs to have an hour of all these people at one time in one place, it's really immense. <laughs>